So here I am in work. It's now 6.30, well, it's 6.45. Ugh. Last week we had a bit of an issue with one staff member who has injured himself and he's unable to come to work. Nothing to do with crisscross removals, but he can't come into work. So this week we're under a little bit of pressure because we're a man down. I'm trying to juggle doing quotes and office work with actually having to work on the jobs as well. So I've drafted in a friend of mine to help. Today, I've obviously, yesterday I locked myself out of the, the van with the broken handles. So I'm now gonna have to go up first thing this morning. The locksmith's coming. We're gonna have to get that fixed. And then I have to go up to a client's house who we moved the other day who needs to do a little bit of unpacking work. So I'm gonna bring the camera up and see if he'll let us film anything. But it was an absolutely beautiful house. One thing about service-based business, especially if you're location-based, so if you run anything to do with having to go to an actual location to deliver a service, removals is one thing, or moving companies, gardeners, cleaners, plumbers, electricians. If you're running a team of those kind of people and people can't come into work for whatever reason, there's always something, you know, people obviously get sick, they have personal reasons, they've got kids, and you have to be able to factor that in and think more or less every single day. If somebody doesn't show up tomorrow, what are we gonna do? We have an office administrator here, Chris Cross Removals, who does a fantastic job of running the office. And then I'm usually here as well, doing bits of you know market work and whatever else I have to do. But if the situation arises where I need to go out on the vehicles, then I'm there to step in. But of course, it's not always ideal because I've got my days are usually full with quotes and different things. So when that does happen, it can be a real pain because I've got to rearrange a lot of things. But at the end of the day, the customers come first. They're the people who are paying us. We need to make sure we get them moved because most people have a definitive moving date. They can't do it. It's not like we can just postpone moves or illegally obligate contracts to move on that day. So it's important that we sort of pull our resources together and get through. There's, there's days where everything just runs smoothly and then there's weeks like this where everything's a bit tougher. But I'm sure if any of you are in a service-based business, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. And you can put all the systems and processes and everything in place, but some days shit just hits the fan and you just got to get the head down and get on with it. My personal opinion, if you have to postpone or cancel on a customer for a survey or for whatever reason, the best thing to do is give them as much notice as possible. If you don't give them a lot of notice and you want to give them 15 minutes, people have been sitting about waiting on you. And you have to remember, people's time is valuable. Uh, you can't just think about your own time. People are giving up their time for you to come to their house so that you can quote for their service. And at the end of the day, these are the people that are paying the salaries of your employees and for you as well. So it's important that you treat them with a bit of respect and show them their time is as valuable as yours. Here's the key guy, ready to let me back into the van. Twice in 24 hours I've had to get him. So we phoned the key while the auto locksmith to come out and he was trying to get the door open from the inside here. As you can see, it looks like an extremely tedious task. It took over an hour, but he did get us in eventually. So now we'll have to leave the window open until we get it fixed. After that, we took it to our customer's house and then we went to get his bed bolts for his new bed. This little fucking thing, an M10 bolt, it doesn't have the screw that we need. How do you feel our efforts have went today, Paul? Fruitless. Well, not totally fruitless because you were here. <laughs> <laughs> so, after a long day, we have figured out what the problem is. So, in my hand, we have an, what's called an M6 bolt, which is quite commonly used in beds for screwing the footboard or the headboard into the side panels before the slat goes on. So. Somebody coming up behind me. Fuck that. With this bed, it slides into the, the the back end of the footboard or the headboard and slides into the side panel. Then in this part, we have like a ha it's like a half moon shaped screw. It screws into that and then that holds that in place. Now, the problem that we had today was that this customer had a bespoke a bespoke made bed made in America. And rather than being an M6, it was an M10 size bolt. Now, in the UK, they only make M10 size bolts up to 100 millimeter. And we, this particular one, we needed 130. So to give you a bit of perspective, there's the thickness of an M10 bolt compared to an M6. So 
The problem was we could get the thickness but we couldn't get the length and we also couldn't get the half moon screw for the M10 bolt. We tried everywhere, we tried all over Northern Ireland, well, all, all over Belfast, went to B&Q and then the, finally the last, the last place we spoke to told us that it was only in America that we could get the M10 bolts. So we're going to have to order them from America. So what we've done to solve the problem was we used the M8s. We had a couple of sets of M8s in the office. We were able to get the bed together because lengthways it fitted. It fitted into the half moon screw. My only problem with doing that was that I didn't think it was going to be strong enough to hold this heavy bed. But once we put it together, we give it a bit of a test and it was fine. We put a couple of screws in it and we are now going to go to that customer and we're going to order those M10 bolts from America because we can get them online. Just brings me to my point of the day, which is if you're a business owner, probably about 90% of your issues are going to be trying to solve problems, especially if you're in the service business. The thing was, sometimes I think to myself, you know, do I really, do I really need to do this for this customer? And then you have to think, you made them a promise and you're going to deliver. We had this guy in storage for nearly 10 months. We lost his bolts, so technically, yes, it was our fault. It was a massive inconvenience to me today. A lot of people will be thinking, this isn't worth your time. Wasting a day to try and find some bolts for a bed. But at the end of the day, this is our customers who are paying our bills and our wages, keeping our business going. So it's up to us to deliver on what we promised. So that's just a quick lesson for today.